thoughts. I wanted to, of course, get to beer, because who doesn't, well, you know, that's what we're here to talk about. Um, beer is actually, in Egypt, is a dietary staple. <laughs> People, the Egyptian beer is not how we would probably typically think of beer. It was thick and lumpy, and you had to drink it with a straw. Um, the image on the bottom over there is of someone drinking beer with a straw. Um, and it, was, it had a very, very low alcohol content. It's a very simple beverage that's probably been made for thousands of years. And because of its low alcohol content, you could actually just eat it kind of throughout, um, you know, throughout the, or, sorry, drink it, sort of throughout the day. And we know that beer was also rationed to, uh, to people like the laborers on the pyramids. It, it, there are some similarities to certain other African beers that are still made today in, in a very simple kind of way and often are shared in a similar way as well. Here is an image from a wedding in Burundi in the 1980s of people drinking beer that I believe is made from corn. Um, it's amazing the comfort and ease that people feel dismissing the ancient Egyptian claims made by black and white and Asian and European scholars. It's almost as if they operate at a comfortability level of 100 with no doubts in their mind, yet promoting the scientific method on other realms. He's between hairs. I could show you similarities between faces, between lifestyles, between food choices, between religious choices, between words, between all of that. And it will be dismissed at a second's moment, not because they have information that dismisses what I'm saying, but simply because they do not want to believe it. So what do you do in the light of this? Do you keep presenting evidence? If the ancient Egyptian people themselves telling you what they looked like, who they were, where they came from, is not good enough. If European scholars telling you that the ancient Egyptians would have been black, black enough that they would have been considered an inferior race by people who lived in the 1930s and before, if that's not good enough, if... If there's people who are black right now looking at statues going, that person looks like me, if that's not good enough. If multiple attitudes from around the world is not good enough, then what is? Is a small unit of people who are obtained in an idea, locked, locked terminally, should you waste your time? trying to convince them otherwise. And what of the people who already agree with you? If I was a pessimist, I would sit here and say everything I'm saying is correct, but I do not believe it. I have seen minds changed about ancient Egypt. That's why I refuse to attack people because I know it doesn't change anybody's mind. I have seen people who are stubbornly stuck to the idea that there are no Egyptians with full lips and broad noses. And when I showed it to them, they couldn't believe their eyes. And there, at that very moment, they changed their mind. Have you ever seen that happen in a debate where someone changes their mind on sight? I have. It's because the majority of human beings in this world do not bow down to any racial concept of the ancient egyptians but instead have no opinion and once you give them an opinion and hopefully you give them the right opinion they will understand why the ancient egyptians are black the only people who refuse this information are people who have something to lose if the ancient egyptians are black and they lose it all the time in the comments they lose it during their history. They lost it at all points. And they're going to lose it again in the future when DNA and all other kind of evidence proves us right. But here's the scary part. Having skepticism of this level is unjustified. Having words that you try to hide away behind in order to make us feel like there were no great civilizations in Africa, except that without even including Egypt, there's multiple civilizations in Africa. I've seen many people do their best to separate Egypt from Africa. And even if they were white, why would that make them a European civilization? 
why is it that any other place in the world when you see people for example in thailand the fact that the people are brown skin does that make them a black civilization therefore an african civilization why is the cutoff that when people come from africa and they go around the world they're no longer african but when people come from europe and then they come back into africa they remain european why is that the cutoff? And the reality is, is because when you don't want to give people credit, when you want to take things away from other people, the way you do it is you play mind games. They play these mind games over and over and over again. That's why they want to separate North Africa from Sub-Saharan Africa. There is no beef between Africa and North Africa in real life. But... The reason why it feels like there is is because they cling on to this Caucasian idea, which they are Caucasian and they must, by all means necessary, deny reality that has happened in their own nations. Once you accept the truth that the people who are Caucasian in North Africa only came recently compared to the Africans who are black, which only makes sense then the history can start to take place. And also, when we look at the literature, the literature of North Africa, regardless of race, shows that Africa is tied to the Middle East and that the first people in the Middle East were Africans, black Africans. And I'm not talking about when they first moved out of Africa, no matter what timeline you are given, because there's timelines ranging from 100,000 to 50,000 years ago. I'm talking about 10,000 years ago. And I'm talking about how some people moved in from the north parts like Russia and stuff like that and Turkey and Turkmenistan and moved back into the areas of Iraq and places like that and they cannot see that that area would have been occupied by a black population and we know it. We know that East Africans left Africa not very far away. We know that Afro-Asiatic languages are black African languages that spread throughout the world. We know that that area called the Levant where farming was created, we know that that area was actually occupied by people who would have been black. Now, how many, we don't know, but we know that they were there. Now, we also know that farming was probably invented more than once. Not probably, absolutely. We know this because if you look at the Americas, Farming couldn't have come from anywhere else unless you accept conspiracy theories. It couldn't have come from anywhere else except America. And my final point is this. Look how much we have discovered about Europe and the Americas and parts of Asia, Japan, simply by digging there's information we found out about these places in the last 10, 5 years, things that we never thought they were capable of. But if you look at Africa, one of the most unexplored archaeological sites, the most one of the most unexplored natural sites, one of the most unexplored uh, historical sites of man, people seem to be sure about what happened in Africa, the story of Africa. You know, despite the fact that there's so much messy stuff going on in Africa, if you look at Congo, for example, you had at least 100 tribes in one single spot who would have shared stuff and did things together. You couldn't even classify what belongs to who and what belongs to where. And then you talk about how Europeans came and took the stuff and just ran away with it. And then on top of that, you talk about how modern people of that area still were building some of these things in their original way and then leaving them. But people want to talk about it like the story of Africa is done. In real life, Africa hasn't even started being explored. Think about how much in South Africa has been explored right now. When they actually look, in the last 15 years, when they actually look, at caves 
they find things that humans did back then, 200,000 years ago, 100,000 years ago, that we thought was stuff that started 10,000 years ago, 15,000 years ago. We find the oldest burials in caves from way back before we were even what you would classify as human. So how can we sit here and say that we've already figured out and mapped the creations of Africa and the history of Africa when most of Africa remains unexplored? And the parts that we have explored, most people don't even know about. When I showed people the beads that speak, most people had never heard of that. They thought that there was no literature in Africa, that there was no documentation in Africa. They don't know that documentation has existed in multiple forms in Africa, in both colors and symbols and all kinds of forms. In their head, Africa is a place where there was art late, there was clothes late, there was everything late, and that because it was late, it must not be an invention independent of Africa. But first of all, prove that it's late. Their proof that it's late is the fact that they've never explored in these regions. And when they do explore, they find something old and go, oops. Of course, oops. And I'll tell you this much about Africa. It's the home of the human race, the original home of the human race. And the branch that went outside of Africa is just another African branch. All its discoveries are merely, merely an offshoot of Africa. That's why when people say, why do you talk about Greece? Why do you talk about all these other places? Because those people are an offshoot of Africa. They're evidence of what Africans are capable of as well.